a warm welcome to the students of government degree college kheratabad of uh, first year that is ba bsc and bcom so the curve in the sky in the previous video we have done soft skills and then value orientation and writing so today we are going to do the grammar part so here you can see the curb in the sky grammar part so i am r sucharita government degree college kharatabad hyderabad department of english so today we are going to see the first unit that is the curb in the sky grammar part that is noun common nouns and proper nouns so you have learned from your primary school that what is a noun and what is uh, what are common nouns and what are proper nouns so me too i uh, learned in my primary school itself that a noun is the name of a person place animal thing so in this uh, that is in your ug section you have to learn the definition of a noun as a noun is a part of speech that identifies a person place thing quality concept idea emotion thought or anything that exists there are different kinds of nouns so the first one is common nouns and proper nouns so a noun is a part of speech which identifies which identifies a person and then place then thing you know who is a person and then you know uh, like uh, ravi and sam like that and place you know what is a place like hyderabad secretariat thing thing is a pencil pa paper and then doll etc and then quality quality also comes under noun what is the quality of the paper we ask and then concept on which concept we ask so it is concept and then idea then emotion you know what are ideas and emotions and thought or anything that exists so here we have seen eight person place thing quality concept idea emotion thought or anything that exists that is called as a noun so these nouns again they are classified classified into different kinds of nouns so the first one is common nouns and proper nouns a common noun refers to a general class of person so what is a common noun commonly we say so common noun refers to a general class of person and place or object for example city is a common noun state is a common noun person is a common noun player p l a y e r player is a common noun book is a common noun and ball is a common noun so all these they refer to general class city state person player book ball then the next one is proper noun a proper noun refers to a specific person place object etc for example hyderabad telangana radhika sachin tendulkar so this is the difference between a common noun and a proper noun so what is a proper noun it refers to a specific person indicating their name okay so specific person or specific 
place or specific object. So the best examples are Hyderabad. It is called by name, a special name. So that is why it is called as a proper noun. Telangana, Telangana state, Andhra state, we say. Especially we are calling the state by name. We are not, we are not just saying state. So when you specifically call them by name, then they are called as proper nouns. Radhika, Sunita, Pravalika, we say. Sachin Tendulkar, the cricketer. So specifically, when you are pointing out the name or place, then it is called as proper noun. So the first letter of a common noun is not capitalized unless the noun is the first word in a sentence, whereas the first letter of a proper noun is always capitalized. So the first letter of a common noun it is capitalized. That means you have to start with a capital letter that you have to remember unless the noun is the first word in a sentence. Okay. So whereas the first letter of a proper noun is always capitalized. So the proper noun it is always capitalized. Now a sentence is given. Hyderabad is the best city to live in. Hyderabad. It, the Hyderabad, it is the first word in the sentence. So, when it is the first word in the sentence, how do you begin the sentence? You begin the sentence with capital letter. H will be capital letter. So, Hyderabad, it is a proper noun is the best city to live in. Then the next sentence. Cities are generally more crowded than villages. Cities are generally more crowded than villages. Cities, they have underlined. And villages, they have underlined. So but the underlined words, we can easily recognize them that uh, cities, although it starts with a capital letter, because it is the beginning word of the sentence, so these are called as common nouns, cities, villages. Then Hyderabad is located in the state of Telangana. Hyderabad is a proper noun. Telangana is a proper nouns. Specifically, we are calling them by names. State is a common noun. James Thurber was a well-known short story writer. James Thurber is a name. That means this name, it comes under proper noun. Was a well-known short story writer. Writer is a common noun like that. So in your textbook lesson number one that is unit number one on page number nine you are given a box here horizontally and work vertically they have filled with so many letters. So those letters you have to observe and that thing is you have to find common nouns. You have to make a word which means a common noun. Find common nouns in the grid below. So fill in the table on the next page by writing a corresponding proper noun. For each common noun you find in the above grid. So the first one is done for you. Now here from the from this box from this big box the or the grid you have to find out what common nouns so they are horizontal and they are vertical so your job is to find out a word which is a common noun 
you have a separate uh, column for common noun and you have a separate column for proper noun on page number 10. So your job is find, to find out common nouns and proper nouns and write them in these columns. So the first one he did for you that is mountain. So like that from the box you find so many common nouns that is building, holiday, website, picture, book, phone. Then proper nouns are Mount Everest, building, holiday, then Yahoo, then book, like that. You, you find. So there are so many words you can find from this grid. So very few I told you so that you will be finding and you will be writing. You, I told just five five each but you can find a lot more if you observe them carefully. Now so these are common nouns and proper nouns. Hope you have understood. Then the next one is abstract nouns and concrete nouns. So we are going to learn what are abstract nouns and what are concrete nouns. Abstract nouns refer to things that cannot be detected through our five senses. Such things cannot be seen, heard, smelled, tasted or touched. Abstract nouns name an idea, moment, quality or concept. For example, beauty, curiosity, love, happiness, knowledge, wisdom, health. So what is the definition of this abstract noun? Abstract nouns, they refer to things that, can, that cannot be detected through our five senses. Our five senses, that is the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, skin, these cannot recognize, okay? So, refers to the things that cannot be, you cannot detect them through your five senses. So, such nouns, they are called as five, uh, they, sorry, they are called as abstract nouns. That means you cannot touch them. You can just feel them. That's all. They are called as abstract nouns. Such things cannot be, they cannot be seen, they cannot be heard. They cannot be smelled, they cannot be tasted, or they cannot be touched. So, abstract nouns name an idea, moment, quality, or concept. So, what are the examples of these abstract nouns? So, the examples of these abstract nouns are beauty, then curiosity then love, then happiness, knowledge, wisdom, health, all these. You can feel them, but you cannot touch them. Okay, so that is why they are called as abstract nouns. And what are concrete nouns? Concrete nouns refer to things that can be recognized through our senses. These things can be seen, heard, smelled, tasted or touched. In other words, concrete nouns refer to physical objects that have mass, for example, ball, water, glass, bridge, pen. So what are concrete nouns? They're, they are just opposite to abstract nouns that you have to remember. So, concrete nouns, they refer to things that can be recognized. You can recognize them through your senses. Through your five senses, you can recognize them. Whereas, abstract, you cannot. Here, you can recognize them. So, these things, they can be heard. You can hear them. You can smell them. You can taste them. And you can touch them. Touching. Touching physical objects. Okay. So, in other words, concrete nouns refer to 
physical objects that have mass for example ball ball you can touch it you can smell it okay and then water you can drink it and then glass you can touch it then bridge you can walk on it you can see it you can touch it and then in the same way pen pen is also a physical object you can touch it you can see it so, so there are so many you can say as examples for concrete nouns so these are called as abstract nouns and concrete nouns so once again these abstract nouns they refer to the things that cannot be detected through our five senses okay then concrete nouns they refer to the things that can be recognized through our senses they are just opposite to each other concrete nouns you can see them and you can touch them whereas abstract you cannot so they are the definitions of concrete nouns now a box is given here on page number 10 separate the words in the box below labeling the I, them either concrete or abstract so you have to recognize now what are concrete and what are abstract a table is given all jumbled up with abstracted concrete nouns and now you have to recognize them and the nouns which are abstract nouns you have to write in the abstract nouns column and the nouns which are concrete nouns you have to write them in the concrete nouns column so now abstract nouns first we are going to recognize them impression is an abstract noun peace is an abstract noun trust then confidence motivation excitement fear soul anger intelligence all these they are called as abstract nouns which we found them in the box given here and then what are concrete nouns now you got all the abstracts now it is very easy to find out concrete nouns so player then clock you can see and touch the clock tower you can see and touch muzzle you can see monument then park p a r k computer then stone star lamp all these they are called as concrete nouns you can see them and you can touch them so this abstract and concrete nouns now we are going to see collective nouns so what are collective nouns and compound nouns so a collective noun refers to a group of people animals or things treated as a single unit for example army family fleet flock bunch team so what is a collective noun you have to remember that always it is group of people not single not a person who is alone group of people is called as a collective noun in the same way group of animals is a collective noun or things treated as a single unit whatever all the gampagutta we say that kim that comes under a single unit then that is called as collective noun so what are the best examples of these collective nouns army a r m y there are so many people together army then family mother father siblings all these group of people they are family in the same way fleet f l e e t fleet together the sheep then uh, bunch all together flowers 
bunch of flowers we say bunch then team all the players together is called as a team so army family fleet flock bunch team all these are called as collective nouns now he gave you an exercise here you have to fill them on page number 11 a dash of wolves so it is a flock of wolves or you can say a pack of wolves then a dash of flowers a bunch of flowers a dash of sailors a crew of sailors c r e w crew then a dash of robbers a band b a n d band a dash of stars a galaxy g a l a x y a dash of cattle herd h e r d herd a herd of cattle so these are the fill in the blanks now we are going to see what are compound nouns a compound noun is formed by the combination of two or more words for example mother in law school bus bedroom so compound itself we can understand that there is some combination there okay so a compound noun is nothing but it is formed by the combination of two or more words it may be two words or you can take more than two words so when you combine them when you mix them up then that is called as a compound noun so the best example is mother in law father in law mother in law father in law we say so mother is a different word in is a different word law is a different word we are combining them to make a sense okay so mother in law you find hyphen after mother and after in also you find a hyphen so that is mother in law okay so three words are there is a combination of three words here so that is why mother in law or father in law they are called as compound nouns in the same way school bus school is a different word bus is a different word both are combined to, uh, together to make a meaning okay so school bus is also a compound noun in the same way bedroom bed is a different word and then room is a different word you have joined them together or you have combined them together to make a sense so it became bedroom bedroom is a compound noun hope you have understood what are collective nouns and compound nouns now here too he gave you a little exercise on page number 11 so uh, school bus noun plus noun keyboard you can say key is a different word board is a different word key keyboard then bedroom already we have seen in the same way adjective plus noun what is adjective black is an adjective then noun board is a noun so black board in the same way red rose red is adjective rose is noun red rose is a compound noun then blue bird blue is an adjective bird is a noun okay so blue bird together is called as a compound noun in the same way you have to form words with verb plus noun swimming is a verb then p o o l pool is a noun so swimming pool okay so like that verb what is a verb so dancing dancing is a verb doll is a noun so dancing doll you can say dancing doll is a compound noun 
then laughing laughing is a verb okay then uh, buddha is a noun so laughing buddha is a compound noun then noun plus verb so first you have to think about noun and then add verb hair cut hair is noun cut is verb hair cut then the next word is car wash car is a noun then wash is a verb car wash compound noun in the same way ramp walk ramp is a noun and then walk is a verb a ramp walk is a compound noun so like that hope you have understood this collective nouns and compound nouns now we are going to learn about countable nouns and uncountable nouns countable nouns are people places objects etc which can be counted such nouns can have singular or plural forms for example brother brother city cities mouse mice these can be counted in numbers as in two brothers or three cities so countable nouns what are countable nouns countable nouns are people then they are places then they are objects which can be counted you can count in your class how many students are there how many people are there in your class you can count so that is why they are called as countable nouns in the same way how many places are there in telangana state you can count them they are countable the same way objects how many objects are there in your house they are countable so when they are able to be counted then you can call them as countable nouns so such nouns uh, can have singular or plural forms for example brother brothers how many brothers you have you can count then cities how many cities are there in telangana state you can count city cities then mouse mice how many uh, mice are going around you can count them so these can be counted in numbers as in two brothers you can say three cities you can say because you are able to count them so that is why they are called as countable nouns and what are uncountable nouns uncountable nouns are concepts substances which cannot be counted because they cannot be divided into separate individual elements for example water milk bread oil again you have an exception here uncountable nouns can however be quantified with the addition of countable nouns as in a glass of water 1 liter of milk two loaves of bread or three bottles of oil uncountable some you cannot count them it is not possible humanly for you to count them unless they are quantified you cannot count the those quantified also only few are there okay so countable nouns are concepts substances etc which cannot be counted humanly it is impossible so which cannot be counted because they cannot be divided into separate individual elements for example water can you count water in the sea no then in the same way milk and bread oil but these when you take uh, that is these uncountable nouns however when they are quantified with the addition of countable nouns then for example if you pour water into a glass you can say one glass of water two bottles of water 10 bottles of water 1 liter of milk in one bottle and 10 uh, liters of milk in a plastic can like that you can count the bread like two loaves of bread 
or three bottles of oil okay so like that when they are quantified it will be possible now there is an exercise given here for you to do on page number 12 in your textbook so quantify the following uncountable nouns and make them countable luggage so pieces or piece of luggage you can say then furniture piece of furniture juice glass of juice bottle of juice you can make them countable then paper reams of paper bundles of paper you can say then glue bottle of gum butter butter so butter can be divided into grams ounces ounce then coffee cup of coffee mm, sorry cup of coffee cups of coffee then uh, sugar cubes of sugar spoons of sugar you can say a spoon of sugar then money money is bundles of money then information so it is piece of information thesis of information so like that you can fill these so hope you have understood what are countable nouns and uncountable nouns now we are going to see what is this vocabulary word roots prefixes and suffixes so you have learnt already in your earlier classes what is a prefix and what is a suffix so word roots prefixes and suffixes a root is a simple form of a word or a part of a word without any prefix or suffix a prefix is a word fragment added in front of a word for example b i by p r e 3 u n un a suffix is a word fragment added at the end of a word for example h o o d hood then l e s s less then only y all these are suffixes so combining words with uh, prefixes and suffixes produces new words for example prefix un plus a root able is equal to new word that is unable un plus able is called as unable then root able plus suffix y a new word that is called as ably so you have removed e and you have added y the suffix y so it is a new word which is called as ably so what is this a root is a simple form of a word a part of a word without any prefix or suffix so what is a prefix a prefix is a word fragment added in front of a word from your uh, school you are learning what is a prefix always this word fragment it is added in front of a word okay so and in the same way what is a suffix a suffix is a word fragment which is added at the end of a word when it is added at the end of a word then it is called as suffix hood he gave you that means you can say childhood child plus hood childhood hood is added at the end of a word in the same way l e s s less he gave you careless c a r e care plus l e s s less careless so less is the word fragment which is added or which is called as a suffix which is added at the end of a word so that is called as prefix and suffix this you have to remember prefix means before suffix means after so breaking a word down into root prefix and suffix might help you to determine its literal meaning many english words were borrowed from greek and latin 
It is a good idea to learn the meaning of common roots, prefixes and suffixes as this could help you deduce the meaning of new and unfamiliar words. So many English words as we are using and learning and have known them, all these they were borrowed. They are borrowed from which languages? They are borrowed from Greek and Latin language. Okay, so that you have to remember. So, what is the common, when you take a word and study, what is its origin? From which language is it taken? All these, the history of the word, we try to study. Okay, so like that, you can learn the meaning of common roots, prefixes and suffixes, so that it will help you deduce the meaning of new and unfamiliar words. Now we are going to see the table on page number 13. Auto, A-U-T-O, auto. This auto from where it is taken? It is, ta it is the Greek root. That means it, auto is a word which is borrowed from Greek language. A-U-T-O, auto. Then, what is the meaning of this, uh, the word auto? It means it is self, S-E-L-F, self. So, example, you can say autograph, then automatic. So, auto, some uh, suffixes are used. Graph is a suffix, matic is a suffix, autograph, automatic, like that. In the same way, bio, B-I-O, bio. What is bio? Bio is a, uh, it is a Greek root. Bio is taken from or bio is borrowed from Greek language. And what is the meaning of this bio? Bio means it is life. So the examples are biology, biography. Then chrono. Chrono is also a Greek root, borrowed from Greek language, chrono. What is the meaning of chrono? Chrono means it is time. The examples of chrono is chronology, synchronize. Then the next uh, one is, the next root is a dem. Dem is also a Greek root. So what is the meaning of this dem? Dem means it is people. Grem is, uh, dem is taken or borrowed from Greek language and then the meaning of dem is people. For example, you can say democracy, demographic. Then the next Greek root is electro. Electro is a Greek uh, root borrowed from Greek language. Then, so the meaning is amber. That means uh, the examples of electro are electricity, electromagnet. Then the next uh, Greek root is geo. Geo means earth. Examples are geography, geology. Then graph. Graph is a Greek root. Meaning is right. So the examples of this graph are autograph, graphic. Then mega, mega is a Greek root. Mega means large. Megawatt or megabyte are the examples. Meter is a Greek root, meaning measure. Examples are thermometer, kilometer. Then pan, pan is a Greek root. So meaning is all or entire. Examples are Pandemic, Pantheon. Then Phil, P-H-I-L, Phil is a Greek root. The meaning of Phil is love. So examples are philosophy, bibliophile. A photo is a Greek root. Meaning is light. Then examples are photograph, photosynthesis. Then psych is a Greek root. Meaning mind or soul. Examples are psychiatry, psychology. Then tele is a Greek root. So meaning is uh, of tele is far away, far away. 
so the examples are television telescope then theo t h e o theo is a greek root meaning is god examples are theology atheist now up till now we have learned the table of greek roots now we are going to learn latin roots so we'll see what are latin roots so uh, the first latin root is audi a u d i audi meaning is here and the examples are audio audience then beni is a latin root meaning is good examples are benefit benign then cred c r e d cred is a latin root meaning believe trust examples are credential incredible the next uh, root is dict d i c t latin root meaning is speak so the examples are dictate verdict then doct d o c t is a latin root the meaning of d o c t doct is teach examples are document doctor the next one is latin root fact the meaning is make examples are factory manufacture then the next one is fin f i n fin meaning is end e n d end or limit the examples are with fin are final confine the next latin root is gen g e n gen so meaning is birth and then the examples are jenny generation the next latin root is miss m i s miss m i t mit the meaning is send so the examples are transmit missile then the next latin root is n o v slash n o u so n o v or n o u the meaning is new examples are novus renovate the next one is omni o m n i meaning is all and the examples are omnivorous omnipotent next one is port the meaning is carry then the examples are transport portable the next latin root is scrib or script meaning is right examples are scribble script then sense s e n s or s c e n t meaning is feel then the examples are sentiment sensation then v i d oblic v i s the meanings of these are c s e e c so the examples are visible video so up till now we have seen both the firstly we have seen greek roots and then latin roots what are its meanings and what are its examples so now you have got an idea what are these greek roots what is their uh, what is their meaning and what are the words that can be formed with these greek roots or latin roots so like that we have uh, examples of these uh, prefixes and suffixes on page number 14 and 15 only few i'm going to see and you can open your textbook and you can learn them only few i'm going to do so prefixes now anti a n t i anti anti is a prefix okay so and oblique a n t ant so here the uh, prefix anti the meaning is instead or against 
So what are the uh, examples that you can form the words with this prefix A-N-T-I, anti, antisocial you can say. Then with A-N-T, antacid you can say like that. Then deca, deca is also a Greek prefix. For example, deca means it is, the meaning is stem. And the examples you can form with a deca is decade. Then decalogue or decalogue, okay. Then uh, eco, E-C-O, eco is a Greek prefix. So what is the meaning of it? Environment or habitat. So with eco, you can form the words ecology, ecosystem. So these three I gave you examples for Greek prefixes. Now we are going to see Latin prefixes, a. A is a Latin prefix, not without. Not or without is the meaning of this Latin prefix A. For example, a moral, A M O R A L, a moral, a political, a political. So these are the examples. Then by, D I by, by. What is the meaning of this uh, Latin prefix by? That means it is to or double two or double and what are the examples examples are with by are you can say bifurcate or biannual and then the next latin prefix is contra c o n t r a contra the meaning of this contra is against and what are the examples of this contra you can say contradict or contrast these are Latin prefixes. Now we are going to see some suffixes. Now 3-3 three, three, we have seen 3 Greek prefixes and 3 Latin prefixes. Now we are going to see suffixes which comes at the end. Okay. So AC oblique IAC. So the meaning is pertaining to. So when you add the suffix at the end. I A C for card C A R D card plus I A C suffix it becomes cardiac cardiac arrest we say in the same way M A N I A C manic M A N I A C I A C in the same way crazy C R A C Y this is a Greek suffix. So the meaning of this crazy is called as government and the examples are aristocracy. So aristo plus crazy becomes aristocracy. Crazy is the suffix. In the same way democracy, demo plus crazy is democracy. Then genic, the meaning of genic is suitable. So you can make it as carcinogenic, then photogenic, her face is photogenic, we say. So like that. So these are the examples of suffixes, uh, Greek suffixes. Now we'll see Latin suffix, A-B-L-E, A-B-L-Y. So the meaning of A-B-L-E, able and able is able to or capable of being. So, uh, the examples are transferable or identifiably. Transfer plus able is equal to transferable, suffix able. And then identify plus ably is identifiably. That is called as a Latin suffix, able. A, B, L, Y. Then age, A, G, E. Age means belonging to or related to. So the examples are postage, marriage, postage, marriage. So A, G, E, I, A, G, E are the Latin suffixes. Then E, R, Y, oblique R, Y. So the meaning of E, R, Y, R, E, R, Y, R, E is place for occupation of so it is winery v i n e plus r y winery we say then d e n t i denti 
plus STRY dentistry, winery dentistry are the examples of the Latin suffix ERY and RY. So we have a little exercise, a small exercise here. So uh, we'll do it very quickly. So Salman watched a preview of the movie. So prefix is pre and uh, suffix is view, preview. And he gave another word disappear. So the magician made the pigeon, pigeon disappear. This is the prefix and appear is the root. Radhika asked the actress for her autograph. Auto is the prefix, graph is the root. Chandan removed the item from the box, removed. So, re is the prefix, move is the root and suffix is ed. I stood on a balcony overlooking the park. So, overlooking. So, look is the root, prefix is over and suffix is ing. Hime's story was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, believe is the root, un is the prefix and able is the suffix. Then one should not dress informally in office, informally. Form is the root, prefix is in and suffix is ly. So with this we have completed uh, these uh, Greek roots, word roots, that is vocabulary, word roots, prefixes and suffixes. So until then, thank you.